The old boy I bought this pickup from told me the engine was bad. On top of that, I know for a fact that it's been full of water multiple times over the years and the engine's stuck. She's locked up tighter than county jail. So naturally, I'm gonna do the right thing and get it unstuck and try to get this thing running and driving once again. So the rig here is a 1978 Chevrolet C10. I know, weird, right? It's a silver rattle. She's loaded up. Cruise control, it had air, had a factory tack, a bunch of other really neat options. It's got a step side bed on it right now, which of course didn't originally come with the truck. But I bought this truck as a parts truck. I paid 800 bucks for it years back. It's got cool Western wheels and the visor and the light covers and a bunch of other stuff I'm gonna show you here. And then something changed. I actually got a title for this thing. And now I'm thinking, well, can the whole truck be saved and we just put the whole rig back on the road? I just really don't like parting rigs out if a guy can help it. So we're up to the challenge. This one's going to be a doozy. Like I say, it's been sitting outside for years with no hood. I know it's been filled with water countless times and snow and you name it. And the engine is stuck. So we're going to try to reverse all of that. But first, Let's walk around this thing. I'm going to show you this truck. It's actually really cool. So again, when I grabbed this, the guy said the engine was bad. So I didn't really bother, you know, trying to get it running and driving at that time. I was just looking at recouping what I paid for it. And you can say, well, transmission, it's probably got a 350 in it. But we've got a really straight front bumper. We've got, you know, it's kind of a 90s build, late 90s, early 90s, mid 90s, in the 90s build. We got smoked headlight covers, the bar grill, that was a big thing back then. Front's in great shape, really. Again, I had cruise control. It is an air truck, as you can see over there. Looks like a little 350 here, corporate blue. I think this was probably swapped in and then someone gave up on it or they figured out the engine was bad because it's open headers and it's kind of hodgepodge right now. But this is exactly how it's been sitting outside for years and years and years it looks to be all complete there but i don't know that's going to be a lot of work continuing on check out these wheels western wheels they got a deeper dish in the back oh yeah i think three of the four are missing hubcaps it's got a nice pretty decent rear bumper the bed back here does need a little bit of varnish Maybe some polyurethane on the wood. That should bring that right back around. That tire was free. That's a bias pie. There's the cap. You can see the Western logo there. This side of the box is really nice. The other side does have a little wrinkle on it, but I can live with it. See that? Guy could probably even throw his hip into that like Shakira and bring her back around. The cab is in really great shape really great shape there's a dent in the door there of course it's got the visor on it or what whatever that is the big visor up front set of the flat scoop i haven't seen a lot of these kind of the curved one normally they're just kind of shooted off but overall pretty cool looking truck i do have a hood for it somewhere and uh, we just never bothered bolting it on we had it tucked in the trees and rusty acres for years 
And actually, we did have it on for a while, didn't we, Bentley? And then the wind blew it off or something? Yeah, so, but Bentley wants to put the hood back on, I agree. We probably should have done that a lot sooner. Inside, it came with a bunch of stuff. Again, I think it was someone's project that just gave up. Flywheel cover. There's the AC pump, air cleaner, a bunch of bracketry. That intake is on the truck. And we used the original intake for this to pull an engine. I can't remember which one that was, but that was pretty recent. Oh, we got brake shoes. Brake drums, look at that. Oh, another hubcap. That's cool. Seats in really good shape. I really, we probably should get all this stuff out, put it on the shelf or something. We got a slider rear window. The dash is in really good shape for just sitting outside. Over on the captain's side. Bentley, you steered this while we pushed it into the shop. How'd you like it? Pretty comfortable. Nice. No door panels. Did we borrow those for something else or were they always gone? I think they're always gone. Oh, okay. But look at this seat. It's a beaut. Factory tack. We've got factory air. It would have had the AM FM. It's a power windows truck. I mean, she was pretty loaded up. Just like them baked potatoes with the sour cream on them. Headliner's in really good shape. I mean, it's saggy a little bit, like kind of like, like a baby diaper, but it's still there. It ain't got holes in it. Rear view mirror's still on it. So you can see there's a ton of parts here, and it's actually way too complete to part out, I think. We should probably try to get it running, huh, bud? Yeah. It's probably, even if we got it running bad, it's probably worth putting a different engine into yeah. just to have around. Yeah. I agree. This isn't even bolted down. See? That's how you can tell. Someone had a drive pole made for it. I don't know what that says, Southwest Airlines or something. But someone had a drive pole made for it. So they were really into this thing. And then, yeah, like the guy said, he just said, well, the engine's bad, it ain't no good. I didn't ask any questions. I got it so cheap. Bentley and I actually went to get it. And we just threw it on the trailer and got out of there. So, well, let's tear into this thing. Bentley's going to be helping me out on this one. So I'm going to deploy him on removing the sparkulators. We got to just see if there's sitting water in there. Most likely it gets full and then it evaporates, gets full and it evaporates again because of the, the heat down here, which is actually worse -er -er because it's going to weld those rings right to the cylinder wall, which is what we're going to be fighting. And 99% sure the reason that the engine is stuck. So we're going to Pull the sparkulators out, drain any water if we see any in there. I might even try to find a camera or something we can jam in there and take a peek. And then we got to start lubing those up right away. We got to get some juice in there, maybe some mystery oil. I don't know what's in it. It's a mystery. Or diesel fuel or, yep, he just handed me some WD-40. We'll put some kerosene in there. We'll hit it with fire. I got some Brute aftershave cologne we'll stick in there. Anything. Is it Coca-Cola? I don't know. We just, we gotta fill those cylinders up and let that start eating away. The longer we let that sit before we start cracking on this thing, the better chances we have breaking it free. You gonna just take all the wires off to start? Yeah, probably. We'll just, uh, we'll set them up again after we get through this. So we'll just start pulling all these off. Again, the wires look, you know, not that old. I'm sure he put them on right before we picked it up. So a lot of this we're going to reuse. I don't want to throw a ton of money at this, obviously, until we know it. Well, if it can run or why it's bad. It could be as simple as a head gasket or it's overheating or maybe it has low oil pressure. I don't, I really don't know. I can't get this one. It's stuck behind the pipe later? Yeah, it's in weird position. Can't yeah, maybe try the other ones first then. I'll help you on the other ones. Try not to pull the boots off though. Save some money. Looks like basically a stock engine besides headers and an intake. Doesn't have any heads on it. Doesn't look like the timing cover's ever been off, anything like that. 
belts are super rotted. Locked up. Yeah. Well, do you want to soak that down too? Yeah. Might as well get in there. It's seeing everything anyway. Up here on the pin. Right there. There you go. And some down the app too. So that's locked up. I do have a couple different fuel make it happeners around. We can get around that if we don't want to mess with this bog later 6000. But if we can get the bog jet to work, might as well use it. Bunch of water in this back one. Oh, smell that? <laughs> I'll get some rags and we'll stick it in there and try to soak some of that up. There you go. And it should soak up into the rag. Maybe it's the four barrels that are stuck, not the front two BBLs. All right, you stay in there, little dude. I'll get you some tools. Ooh. Definitely still a lot in there. All right, bunch of rust water. Yeah. I think this one. Well, it's actually a good thing that it didn't go past there. That. Yeah, this one wasn't filled with water. Just this one was. Yeah, it's still a little moist in there, but not full. All right, well, let's stuff some more eggs in there. And you said the brake pedal was stuck when I pushed you in. Yeah, it wouldn't really budge. Oh, that's weird. I might have got one of those on, on the shelf though, we'll see. Number one's out? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Bentley said it's running rich. Sure is. But it's not all rusty and full of water. Yeah. So that's good. Maybe those valves are closed. It should only be a few of these cylinders full. What I'm really hoping to avoid here is having to pull the heads off. But we'll see. Sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we got to tear them all the way down. That one doesn't look that bad either. Mm -hmm. Definitely rich, but. That one was a little hard to get loose though. Was it? Okay. Well, we'll keep them in order here. Oh, yeah. She's running out. That was the very back one? Yeah, that was the one that was super hard to get out. Yeah. Get it out of the thing. Oh yeah. She sat in water a long time. She's still dumping? Oh no. Okay, well, let's uh, jump over and I'll get you taking these out on this side and I'm going to stick a camera down this side and see what they look like. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing is the camera underwater. You see that, buddy? Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yep. So we gotta shake this. You think this one was in the water? Or it dried up? Yep, that one was definitely in water. Yeah, this one was really hard to get loose, too. No water came out. Okay. Well, I suspect some of these, we might have to put a vacuum on that or something. Some of these have probably been filled a few times and then dried up. And then refilled because think of how many rainstorms this has been through with the hood off a lot. and all last winter and the winter before okay so you got three more left over there number one here just a bunch of rust and ring ridges in there valve looks good i know this is probably really tough for you guys to see and that's why i'm kind of talking you through this here. Let's see what this other one looks like. Get in there. Yeah, it's, oh, a lot of the same. That's down in the hole, but that's dry. Oh, it's been had water before. A lot of rust on the piston. Cylinder walls look terrible. Oh, good, I don't feel bad, I guess, about cranking on it after sitting all these years. What do you got over there? Really What's What's black and sooty mean? Rich. That's right. Richer than who, you think? Bill Gates. That's pretty rich. Yeah. Let me try this brake pedal he was talking about. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, it just broke free. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta jam the old 13 into her. See what happens, but I'm sure it just probably blew a line somewhere else. Obviously needed brakes. <laughs> Great. Number eight coming out. Water. Oh yeah. Not a lot, but yeah, yeah. spark plug. Full. Oh. Yep. So we got one more to do. So said and done, one, two, three, four, or fifty percent of the cylinders have water in them. <laughs> Great. All right. Do we have that little vacuum, the small green one, we could maybe fit in there and try to suck that water out? Maybe. You want to see if you could find that? I'll start rounding up some juice and we'll make some sort of special concoctions. Get down in these cylinders and lube them up. I suppose we could take a look over here and see how bad these are quick while he's looking for that vacuum. It's the, I think it's a Master Pro Mouse Sucker 200. This one is terrible. There's huge chunks of, I don't even know what they are. And I could see the ring ridge is completely rusted or the top of the piston of the cylinder. So that's, that is, by far the worst one so far. That's, yeah. Let's see if I can get it into this one. We know it had some water in it too. <laughs> it's so pitted, it looks like the moon. That's the, this is the issue. This is why I had a bad engine. It looks like, I don't know if there's a chunk of valve or hardware or something look at that what in the world that looks like physical damage like it it was the piston was banging on something that looked terrible okay you found a vacuum yeah it's kind of like the green one except it's red oh that'll work yeah as long as it's got a small Mouse sucker end on it, we could fit in here. Make sure the filter element's out of it. It's probably full of mouse house. We'll vacuum out the water and we're gonna replace it with juice. That's not good. Ah, I'll just bend her back. Here. Don't feel strong. You gotta hook on something. Yachts! Yachts! Well, I definitely know I used that on a revival last time because of that. Oof. All right, buddy. The valve is obviously open, so I don't know if we'll be able to get everything, but we'll get what we light. can. Light? Yeah. Hold on one minute. You ready? Yep. I hear a little bit. Are you getting it flat against the head? Yeah. Oh, there you go. You feel it? Kind of. Yeah, I can see the hose shaking. Do you want me to hold it for you back here? Yes, please. Now I just gotta find it. Should be right underneath that pipe later. Let her rip! Yeah. Right there. Feel anything? Not really. Maybe a tiny bit. Yeah. Well, the vacuuming, not that successful, but it was worth the shot. Obviously, the valves are going to be open to let water in, so it doesn't really have suction, so to speak. What we're probably gonna have to do is shake the truck as much as we can, spill out what we can, and then once we hopefully break the engine free, we could just use the pistons to push the water out 
and all the other juice. We're gonna have a mess all over the floor in here. So I'm gonna start getting some sort of concoctions ready. Bentley, you can shake the truck like crazy, try to spill out the water. We gotta find, remember that funnel with the funny bendy straw? Yeah. We gotta find that, because that fits in there pretty good. We're gonna fill this thing up and let it sit. And while that's happening, we'll move on to some other stuff. You're getting a bunch? Yeah. Still coming out. Really? Oh, same over here. Did it stop? No, my arm's getting tired. It's, there's still water coming out? Yeah. Wow. It's not like pouring out. It's pouring out. It's still coming out. Somewhere in California, people pay a membership to do this and roll tires around, stuff like that. All right, we're gonna start off with some evaporust. I've had pretty good luck with this stuff. Okay, let me slide this around. I don't want to get this on you even though it's moved the funnel back up so I can pour it in. Good job. You must have it pinched closed because it's not going down. There it's going. A little out of time. Actually, there's an easier way. Well, no, because we know that's only going to go to four. So say we just dump it right down the old yap. Yeah. Well, wait, that would go to the four that were stuck. Yeah. Right? I think so. Well, if we need to, watch your leg. We'll just dump it right down to fuel, make it happen here. And then we're going to put some Marvel Mystery Oil in it. I don't know what's in it. That was some good egg. Well, <laughs> done this a time or two, son. You know what I mean? A little long in the tooth. I think this is just ATV and paint thinner. Who knows? Okay. Let, let it chew on that. So we're gonna work around and do this to every cylinder quick. Some of them are TDC, so they're just gonna take a little shot. Some of them are in the basket. It's gonna take quite a bit like this back one here. But again, we just want this sitting and soaking and this uh, rust remover this stuff will hopefully start chewing and eating away some of that as well. So if we get this thing spun free, we're not just destroying the cylinder walls, but kind of thankfully, which is weird to say, from what we were seeing there, this thing is already just trash. And it looks like three matchbox cars, a chicken foot, quarter inch hail, and nine Legos were in cylinder number two there for 50,000 miles. I might actually consider pulling the valve cover on that side and see if a keeper came off or something. I don't, maybe the valves hung up. That just looked really odd. Do you think it's full? Nothing else is going in. It's not heat. Uh-oh, might be. Got the captain's side filled, moving on to the drinker side. What's nice about this stuff here, it says right on the front, non-toxic, biodegradable, safe on skin and eyes, but it's really good at removing rust, so it's something we keep around and why I'm not worried if Bentley happens to get a drop on his hands, anything like that. Okay, some of these are gonna be tougher. Yeah, especially this one. Yeah. We finally found the get them unstuck funnel. Uh, I labeled this one. We use it for the hemi half to fill the transmission, but got this soft rubber coupler with a smaller nozzle on the end. And then, you know, the flexo light funnel land, but it works great for uh, this purpose right here because you got a little bit of band down there like that, but a guy can hold the funnel. Now that we got the oil and rust remover in the motor, uh, well, that's sitting, we thought we'd stay busy. And uh, we started looking back here and we realized we can just run some bolts through that to mount the bed up and then we can get rid of some of this junk back here. Bentley knows the deal. He's already lubricating up the hinges. Got to prevent the old hood kink, huh? Yep. 
been asked a lot about the hood saver 6000s i keep saying they're coming i promise guys they are right now we're stuck in fulfillment packaging and shipping these are going to be powder coated you're going to get american made hardware with it two different types of hardware they're going to be the absolute best hood saver on the market bar none hands down guaranteed but we got to get through some of the shipping and fulfillment side of it right now and all the powder coating and all that stuff all right do you want to try to find some bolts some stuff that you think will fit back there and we'll test it and we'll get that bed bolted down okay. we're trying a half inch by four Let's see if it'll drop in there is there enough, enough threads yep. perfect okay we'll get some more of those and a lock washer and a nut <laughs> is the wood Wood's getting a little soft back there, isn't it? Yeah. All right, jump up there, cowboy. All these back ones can be shorter. Oh, we'll use these holes, never mind. Okay, drop it through there. Yeah, bolt in the washer, perfect, I'll hold those. Another one on that side, in that corner. And once we get all four in, then we can. It's a step. Extra one. That right there? Um, it's not lined up. Huh? No, it is. But that wood's going to be in the way. Yeah. Let me get like you. Pie sure. One second. What are you doing? Holy smokes, that's 58 cents. Looks like Spider Man jumping around here on my knees, but it came out my ear bones. Here. Wrench that out of there. There. Yeah, lean back. There you go. Oh, my wood floor. It was so good. All right. Okay, that line up. Nice. Okay, one more and then we can tighten them up. Here, you stay there, I'll give it to you. Like the 1800s. 1800s? Easy now. It's a 77 or 78. Perfect. Okay. I'll slide underneath and do the nuts and the washers because I'll get rust in my eyes. I don't want to ruin your eyeballs. Okay. You on righty tighty? Yeah. Ready? Yep. All right. Bentley wanted to do this other corner, so we did it in an X pattern. Now which one do you want to do, bud? Uh, right there. Since we're already back here. Oh, okay. Glad I don't got to crawl under here. Boy, that wood is getting softer and softer. I don't understand. What's going on there? Okay. These are all front pocket treasures. It's taking me a minute. That's a good ratchet strap. Where'd that come from? Keep that. Oh yeah, that's way better. You can make a loud snap and then like a bang. Oh. oh no, it doesn't push. Nice. That's not usual. Was it the roller stuck? I think so, yeah. Yeah, these rollers get get jammed up. We also might be able to get my window down. Oh nice. Looks broken. Definitely broken, but the wires are there to hot wire. Your window's up. We got to get that other window over there up, and we got to be sure to get this closed. This was closed at one time. I don't, I don't know how that got blown open or something. But yeah, let's grease these doors up. Nice. Boy, if this thing was all satin black or matte black, just a cheap primer, 
which I think I have right there. Hot rod flat single stage. Is there? Yeah, they're all over it. Oh. Well, let them be. No, don't leave you alone. Just squirt the juice in where you need to squirt it and leave them be. See? Yeah, just don't squirt them. Just. They'll know if you're fiddling at them. See? They're being nice. Oh, this one is stuck. Oh, there we go. Getting dizzy. Wow. Does this not have any weather stripping? Yeah. Oh, it does. It's just. I'm not used to doors doing that. Well, I think at this point, we're going to jack up the front end here. And let's put it on jack stands, Bentley, so we can get underneath. I think we're going to go straight to prying on the flywheel. There's absolutely no chance it's going to break free off the crank or the charging wheel or anything like that. I think we're just wasting a bunch of time. Let's go straight to the big guns, get the big bars out, start prying on the uh, flex plate. And that's going to give us the most leverage to get this thing turning. And if we could just get it to move an eighth of an inch and we start rocking it back and forth, we could start working a groove, not a groove, well, cleaning a groove, a pathway, moving it. And then we could start just squirting some curl or some arrow curl or some blaster or whatever we can find in there. Um, Do it that way. Once we get the battery in, we're going to have to get a new one of these because... What's wrong with that one? Uh, I don't think it's going to work. Oh, okay. Battery cable? Check. How's that one? It might work, but... Okay. Sure. We'll put them on the list, bud. <laughs> Look at all the rust chunks and stuff that flushed out. That was clean when you put it under there, right? It, like, there's this stuff on it, but... Not the chunks? Not the chunks. Let's see. There you go, bud. Where'd the smaller stands of jacks go? Do you want to get them when I'll do this? Tricep of Maximus. And you switch. Complete pole barn workout. Follow me for more tips. No, you don't want to do that. Okay. We should probably go into the frame because we're really going to be getting it. All right, wait. Maybe we go. Won't the suspension just push down there? Okay, go up one. One on your clicky doo dabber. That. Yep. Okay. And then we'll slowly let it down. Oh. Oh. And we'll leave the jack engaged so you can jack it up and get me out faster. All right, let's get some rags and we'll start wiping some of this up so it's not dripping into our teeth, okay? Right. And then I'll go find an old school trouble light. We'll need that. Pretty interesting here. The Terpsky 350 is painted. It's got a deep pan on it. Open header, like I was saying. And it's got an inspection cover on it, even though there's one laying in the truck. That was chrome. You know, that's probably uh, 16 horsepower right there. You know. So we're going to pop that off and see if we can get the right combination and area to pry on that. The rest of the truck, pretty uneventful. Just a good old C10. Floors are in great shape. I'm pretty amazed at how rust free this thing is. We never even looked at it, did we, Bentley? We just put it on the trailer. And... Yeah. But other than, you know, the, the bed that needs a little bit of wood. 
that it has. No, well, just this one tank. It's had brake lines replaced at one point or another. E-brake hardware is still in it. So, I mean, someone cared about the thing. That's why there's got air shocks in the rear. That's pretty funny. You want to go down there, Bentley, and chase the plastic line on the shock and see where it goes to, see if it's actually hooked up. And then we'll maybe try them out and see if they work. Get some rake in this bad boy, huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The plastic, what? The plastic line. This thing? Yeah, Scoopy. Where does that go? Well, I see it wrapped around the bed, I think. Oh, bummer. Okay. Yeah. So, you just realized something. Uh, this car, we got this when our pond started over there in the junkyard. Now that I remember this, this truck, the bottom was underwater. About a foot of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Which explains a lot of this weird colored rustish stuff. Didn't I? Oh, and then I finally got the tractor in there when it got low enough in four-wheel drive and pulled it out yep. by those other trees. A lot of you guys haven't seen this because it's been way off to the side because we had to move it for that pond. Okay, so there's a bolt up here in the corner. There's another one here. You want to grab a 3 8 uh, ratchet and a little extension? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Now he's got one bolt out working on the other three. You know, out of all of the vehicles we've worked on over the last couple decades, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, Rarely do you see an inspection cover. Probably 20% of them. We'll be sure to put this one back on when this thing's fired up and running. Nope. Probably very unlikely, but I don't care. I think if we get it unstuck, it will work. You think so? Yeah, it's just going to be a challenge. With seeing how those pistons work, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. Okay, go to the other side. Bentley thinks we're just working on a truck, but old dad's got a couple other intentions here, you know. It's a lot of fun working with that kid. All the kids. Bentley just finished pulling out the inspection cover. Looks like an original-ish looking torque converter, maker-upper, coupler, go-forward machine. And, uh, Flex plate, it's got blue paint on it, so that was just taken out from that engine. So now we got to figure out what to pry on. Also, on the list is getting that orange filter out. I usually like to use this tab of the engine over here and the uh, flex plate. Um, Bentley, do you want to grab all of the pry bars? Yep. We'll see what we got here. Got you right up at my teeth here. The uh, vacuum accumulator is unplugged. I'm going to plug that in quick so we don't forget about that. Oh! I just popped my shoulder. Yeah, I heard that. Oh, oh boy, this is going to be a long night. Okay, I think what we're going to do is work back and forth. So I'm gonna to try to get in the center and we'll go off the starter nose, which is uh, to gamble, and then off the block on the other side. But this thing is, whew, my rotator cup of Hondas just snapped in half. Uh, the other thing we can do is bolt in a bar to the flex plate here. I've done that before because we got a bolt hole that's exposed and use that back and forth if we get to that point hopefully we don't but I'm just gonna spend probably half hour here <laughs> trying to rock it back it might need to sit a day or two that Alice Chalmers that sat for what a month yeah two until we had to pull the head off <laughs> great all right let the fun begin okay so my dad is gonna go under there and start prying at that thing to get the engine loose while he's doing that, I'm going to clean out this interior. There is a lot of junk in here. Uh, I brought the trash can over here. So that like things like this, all these nails, random stuff, those can go. This can also go. Actually, there's a new one on the truck. Shiny one. So we'll throw that away. Get rid of all that. I'm gonna clean all this out so that we can see everything in here. And then I'll probably get the 
mouse sucker out and get all the little stuff picked up and then we'll probably go from there. Well, while Bentley's been cleaning the inside here, I've been underneath just prying on that thing until it's blue in the face and woozy. It is not budging. It, you can see it kind of flex, but the rotation must be in the perfect storm where the torque realizationals that I'm applying to the torque twister isn't twisting. This is what I'm saying. There's science happening. So we're going to go ahead and eat supper. I've got some maintenance to do on the property. Got to spread some fertilizer. You know, get the grass a little bit greener. And now I'm going to come back. Got to let that juice sit. I might be getting a little jumpy on it. Hopefully, here in another couple hours, we might be able to get her to spin. I know Bentley wants to come back too and keep cleaning that interior. He's fired up with how the carpet's looking, and seat looks fantastic. And the dash is pretty good too. So excited to see how that cleans up. Well, we're back at it. Bentley's cleaning away. I'm gonna crawl underneath again and uh, do some more prying. Hopefully this thing will pop here. Well, fellas, I've been cranking and cranking. I've been here in this position enough times to know she ain't gonna pop right now. It's gotta sit and soak. So I'm gonna jump in and help Bentley. We're gonna continue cleaning up this interior tonight and then tomorrow I'll try to break this free again, but let's see how clean we can get this. How are you coming over here? Pretty good, I got all the boxes and stuff out of here. Uh, I vacuumed up that side, behind the seat, and that part of the seat. I just gotta get this and then the crack right there and then probably just start wiping everything down. Okay, awesome, good job, buddy. I tried, uh, some leather cleaner I picked up when we did the Lincoln Versailles last that says, and it didn't even touch the seat. I'm gonna try some different flavors. I'm gonna spray it down with this stuff. It's kind of like shaving cream almost. And I don't know. I think you're only supposed to use a little bit. We'll let that sit in and see if that does something. melted that Dang. stuff. Look at that. You can literally see. Now I know. We need to use that on like everything. Oh. You know what? I think I used this on Betty White, the Cadillac. Yeah. That we seriously need to use incredible. this as our work truck. A work truck? You think so? It's so clean and nice. It's coming around. We didn't even know. It was just sitting in yeah. Rest the acres. It's not even like ripped up over here. I know. That's a low mile seat. How many miles does this side of the truck have? 337,526. 307,526. So 30,000. So 130,000 miles, probably. This is what we were talking about, guys. Look at this line of just black. I. You know, back sweat and tar. And then look with this side over here. This just absolutely ate it off. And all this is basically black. A little more stubborn over here, but still, still coming around. I think you're right, Bentley. This seat's gonna be pretty nice. Uh, Starting on the dash. Yep. Yeah, a couple few cracks up there, but other than that. Oh, you're getting the glass with that. That's all right, we'll come back with glass cleaner. This is really cleaning up. It's slicing right through that 
stubborn mold stuff always gets on the back of these seats. That's coming right up. Also, I might just take this out completely. Blank white plate. Hmm. But this might have some moisture in it. I think we'll take that out. Well, good job, buddy, on the interior. Thanks. Looks really good. Thank you. So you think it would be a good truck? Go to town rig, I think so too. It's actually cleaning. We never honestly looked at the thing. We backed in, hooked a winch on it, drug it on the trailer, put it in the trees because we thought it was a parts truck. That's what we were told. But I'm glad we're trying to save this thing. It's actually pretty solid. Yeah. That's going to do it for tonight because I got to let this thing soak. Tomorrow, Jessica and the boys, you're going on a vacation or something for a few days. Yeah. And I'm going the opposite direction for yet another revival. So you won't see Bentley back on this project. So thanks a lot for the help, buddy. Maybe it'll be running when you get back. Maybe. We can take it to town. He wants to get a piece of plywood for the bed back there. That was a pretty good idea. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Let's see if we get this thing broke free. No, probably not. All right, should we go finish fertilizing? Well, we're back next day. Jessica postponed the family vacation with the boys by one day so Bentley can finish helping me. Hopefully we can get it fired up today. Last night we had to pick everything up, get the tractor, pull this truck outside. We had a big storm coming and get my grandpa's truck in here. So we uh, found the air cleaner for this thing and uh, put all the tools away. We'll have to dig everything back out. That's all right. So we're back at it. Biggest thing today is see if we can get this thing to pop free. It's soaked overnight, so I'm pretty confident that we can get at least a little bit of movement out of this thing. I think this morning before we get her jacked up again so a guy can, you know, scooch underneath, I'm going to hit it with this arrow crawl. If you've never tried this, do yourself a favor. Try to find some and give her a whirl. This stuff is incredible. The downside is... <laughs> It's very, very expensive. I've had the same, same can for a long time. I dropped a straw. Have you seen the straw, Bentley? Oh, no. Well, maybe grab one off a brake clean can. I'm going to have Bentley just load each cylinder up with this. We'll let that mix the lies and sit in there for probably 10, 15 minutes while we get everything else ready. And I'm going to go right to the big pry bar again. There you go. I think this was the one for it. Or you want to soak each cylinder down? All right. Carburetor's free. Nice. She's coming around. Make sure you get the straw in the hole if you can. There you go. There's only one engine that's never unstuck, and I think that was the Alice Charmos that we worked on, but that was big time frozen. Yeah, we drug it multiple times and I ended up having a beat on the thing with a piece of wood and some hammers if I remember right. Let's see what the interior looks like today now that it's dried up a little bit. Oh, it still looks really good. Man, we just got to find some door carts for this thing. It is uptown. If this thing is locked or doesn't run, I'm going to take this seat and put it in Remington. I need a good seat in that thing. I have another tan one, but it's tore up on the side. Well, I'll show you. So this seat came out of my dually, which you guys haven't seen yet, but you will soon. It's in pretty bad shape, but that being said, it's still much better than Remington's current seat. Good old Remington. Been driving this truck a lot. See, this one is all the way down to the metal frame with some guy's sweatshirt keeping the pokies out of your behind. It's the correct color, legitimately from the factory. That would look pretty neat. But the red, sure, why not? You have confidence today, bud? Yeah. Good. I kind of do too for some reason. This, uh, I was saying earlier, 
the fuel make it happen here came around. So that's good. HEI looks fairly newer-ish. Oh, I gotta check on that vacuum line. I went to that accumulator. I also filled this up with brake juice last night because we had to pull it out with the tractor in a hurry. And I think you said there was a, a little bit of brake. Yeah, you just have to push really hard. To it That's pretty good. But we can see that the seal on the back is leaking. That master cylinder is shot. But if it's good enough to yard drive for now, hey, it's good enough for who it's for. So while my dad's under there trying to get the engine unstuck, I'm gonna clean this bumper, and here's a little test area we did. It's gonna look way better. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna use a SOS pad, some spray away, some rags. So I'm gonna start doing that. I think it just moved a little. Yep. Are those safety glasses over there on the well, I'm a welding helmet uh -huh. next to the stuffed beaver by the bow and arrow? Uh -huh. Yep, that one. I think this just moved a little, guys. Thank you. Yep. Where did I put my... Get a bite on it. There. You see that? Yep. It's moving. <sighs> Barely. <sighs> but it's moving. <sighs> Am I seeing things or is that going? It's it's moving. There. Did you hear that? Yeah. Now it's moving. Oh yeah, now the stuff leaking out as you push the piston up. Oh yeah, there you go. Doesn't want to go that way. I think we're stuck again. I really need to rock it back and forth. Somehow. Oh, I can smell the arrow curl. Yeah. It'll go this way, but it's not going the other way. Maybe once you do like a full rotation that way, it'll do it the other way. Now it's starting to move. Yeah. Oh, look at the water. I want to try to go 360 degrees here. Oh! Splattering all over me. Yeah, buddy. It's going. Yep. I'm gonna go get my rat. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The waterfall. Fantastic news. It's rotating. <laughs> Only one way, but we're getting there. I think I'm probably a third of the way through the rotation, but I had to abort. I've got every kind of juice in my retina. Let's put it that way. It's moving free enough, it feels like, although I got more leverage back there. I'm gonna stick a wrench on the crank bolt now and try to turn it up front so I don't have to sit there and get splattered by all that stuff. I'm probably gonna rotate it two, three, 12, 19, six, maybe twice, probably four times all the way around, trying to make sure everything is going good. Then we might as well hit it with the key and starter and just get this thing. That's the kind of noise it makes gonna look like murder she wrote basically but I want to make sure it's turning freely so we don't bend any push rods or jam the starter into the flex plate or any of that stuff Oofta. Bentley's got this front bumper 
looking amazing. I wonder if this grill would clean up too, buddy. It's got all these little rust spots on here. Yeah, I bet that SOS probably licked that right off there. So this is the difference in torque from using just a crank bolt to the, you know, really go around your starter engager is it takes a awful lot I'm pulling my body awful lot of oomph up here compared to the back so keep that in mind it's not always best to just go right to the crank and this is why we avoided it initially is there's no way I would have broken free up here probably snapped this bolt off Oh, I just heard a chunk of metal or something come out. Oh, and there's a mouse house coming out of the bell housing. Huh. Oh, that's where the stuff's coming out of, is the bell housing. Found them. Guess we don't have to worry about that critter anymore. Oh, there's this pelvis. Okay. I should probably, I'm going to wait a second and then I'm going to grab that out of there. Kind of trying to spin it faster now. So I can get most of this fluid out before we hit it with the starter. Don't feel any binding, which is good. Okay, I think it's time we hit this with the starter. Yeah, it's, these cables are really messed up right now. So we're just gonna, you know, be lazy <laughs> and jump to the jump box until we can determine if things are gonna happen or not. Then we can struggle and spend 55,000 years trying to get the happy cable off the starter down there. I don't know how to run this box. Go. On. Be free. Start. I'm not sure. All right. Put it in park first, which I think you are. All right, twist it. Nothing? How about now? Hmm. Is this dead? I don't see any. No. Nope. Okay, one of these cables might be bad. Still nothing? Oh, I heard sizzling. Okay. Still nothing? Pull the headlight switch on. Well, we got headlights. We just got a bad starter? Try it again. Well, for sake. Alright. Maybe it didn't have enough amperesses. Okay, try it again. It's in park for sure. Put it in neutral and put it in park. I can't believe it. Well, let's get the jump box on just to make sure. <sighs> Bring the thunder. Bad starter. <laughs> Great. There is hope. I haven't hit it with the Tanya Harding yet. That'll fix it. A guy does forget that starter was underwater. I wailed on it with the hammer. Try it again. Nothing. Okay. Well, let's go dig through parts, see if we can find an old starter. There's a reason I never throw anything away. I think that's Dodge. Here's an old Chevy one here, but I don't know if this works, to be honest. But I have another option. Oh, that big block's missing one. Got this little 400 I built on a budget and used the old blower off the money. But this one I know has a new starter and it fits great with headers right there. So should we pull this one off and pop that one in? Yeah. All right. 
Bentley said, hey dad, if that engine doesn't run, why don't we just put all this in there? Yeah, it's not a bad idea, that'd be pretty fun. Especially since we got a title now. We're gonna have to run into town to get some bat cables. I dug through all the boxes and everything. I've got like 16 positive cables, but they're all too short. I did find one sad cable, but we can run into town and maybe get some tacos or something. How's that sound? Good. We'll fill up the fuel jugs as well and see if we can pick up more fertilizer or something. Make a trip out of it. Another storm rolling through here. Gets a little loud in the shop, but we're working through it. Got the old starter hanging. Finally got it smashed between the headers of the transmission cooler lines. Now I gotta figure out what size them buggers are. I get them out. Wow, it's really coming down. Whew, that's all right. We need it. We need it. I ain't kidding you. Ooh, lightning moving out. Thunder. Hear that? The small wire for the actual ignition or starter is too small. Aha! Christmas tree bit. We gotta wall her out a little bit so that slides over that peg. Okay, I don't know what size this needs to be other than bigger than what it is now. So, I'll take this guy and wall her. Wallerage. That seems like it'd probably be a pretty good wallerage. Let's test it. Testing connection. <sighs> connection confirmed. We'll let that bangle because that's good for electrical wires. You know, you gotta figure out the angleage of all these cables now. There we go. That one's probably gonna spring back once we get her in. Where did I put the Kutska? I like to set up two different ratchets. When I get into the starter situation, so you're not farting around, changing everything. Right, Bentley? Yep. Wow, for Pete's sake. Well, the new starter is in. Well, I guess new to the truck, it's a used starter. But it should be clocked, it should be the right flywheel. We also added a new happy cable onto that thing while we were down here, and that should hopefully take care of that. Now I'm gonna move up top, we're gonna to add a new sad cable, because the other one was pretty rotten as well. These headers are in really tough shape. The flange is just starting to rust away. Wonder what Sarah Evans is doing right now. So this guy here has got to go. We want all of the horsepowers out of the sterilizationals. That's pretty rotten. Should be a standard one forward slash two. I'm probably going to take a death wheel and just zzz, 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 you know, clean. And then we can run this new cable all the way through here. Grab this guy right here. Pop that in. Dinosaur badminton. And rotten eggs too. Did you find something? Yeah. Try it on that one. Oh, you snailed it. All right, put it in that one. Our cable didn't come with hardware. I just, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I guess I got to though, I'm looking right at it. Okay. Uh, what's that? You got peanut butter in the roof of your mouth? I can't understand what you're saying. You got a chunk of BLT on your chin. There you go. Do you know where the death wheel is? The what? The grinder cutter offer. 
restrainer. We should probably get some fresh metal under this so it bites. Well, there it is, over by the vise. Would you grab that, please? Yeah. Nailed it. Is that your first electrical tape band aid? Oh, it's not. Oh, jeez. Don't tell your mom. All right, we're just gonna tackle. Garbola. We don't need that where we're going. Always got to check your grounds when you got a weak starter. You got that? Have done that first Probably. But based on the fact that I beat it with a hammer for 20 minutes and nothing happened, I just know that that other starter is bad. Okay, you want to bolt this one up? This is a body ground, I think. Yep. So I'll go get some, we'll tie that into that. Here's the ranch dress and the tighten it. You're very welcome. I'm not sure when, but I must have worked on this because we got a red cable as a body ground here, so that makes sense. You want to burn these rigs down before they get stolen, fellas, okay? Bentley's finishing up the sad cable there. Uh, I'm probably going to disconnect the fuel line. I'm pretty confident it's going to crank now. We don't, well, I'll just show you. The, it does have a fuel tank and it is hooked to the fuel tank. However, I noticed last night the fuel tank is open and exposed to the elements, which means that's full of rodents and water and rust and leaves and acorns and dirt and grass. So we're going to have to run an auxiliary fuel tank. So I'm gonna disco this just while we're cranking it to see what happens, and then we'll have to run some sort of tank. Maybe we'll just put it in the bed, huh? And run some long line up. All right, good idea. Okay, we're getting ready to crank on it again. Let's see what happens. Yep. Keep going. Okay, I think we got most of it out by hand cranking. Does the oil pressure gauge work? What's it say? Really? Okay, well we got good oil pressure. That's good. Uh, well, that's, uh, do you want to put spark lighters in it and I'll start working on fuel? I got some on the shelf from the 66 Ford. I bought an extra pair. They're over there. Just in case. Yep. Are they 45 TS or 44 TS? That'll work. I'll have him pop those in and I'll go find some sort of a fuel tank or jug or something. We could just run temporarily. Snugger. What does that mean? Give her a snug. Yeah. A little bit more. Give her a little hat. There you go. That's pretty good. got all the sparkulators in and torqued up. I threw this fuel tank back here and I'm not, I can't remember the last time I used this thing. It's been a long, long time. He fed a line down to me. This is running down by the frame. I think I'm going to send you under there, little man, with some zip ties and I'll have you zip tie them up along the frame to whatever you can find. Keep it away from the header. And while he's doing that, I will work on putting the lightning hoses back on, get all that done. Goal here is to dump something down the fire maker, see if this thing will at least make some noise. <laughs> A little heavy? 
he's jacking it up again so he has a little bit more room. Hopefully this thing will bark off, make some noise, and we're not going to hear any dreaded knocks or make any windows in the block. I'm trying really hard to remember what the issue was with the engine. But I think he just said it was bad. I, I don't know. It's got oil pressure, which is good. But who knows what else? Could have a jump timing chain. Could have a... I mean, the rod could be blown. I, who knows? We're just going to have to try to work our way through this thing. Maybe, just maybe, we can wheel this thing around the yard. It would look good all solid one color, but it also looked good just shine juiced. I don't know, it kind of has that weird muscle truck look. Different colored body panels and this and that. Oh, you need some zip tie. Oh, you got them. All right. All right, so I just finished uh, mounting the fuel line or zip tying it. I got it zip tied all the way across. I got it out of the way of the header so it can't light on fire or anything. So now that that's done, I think I'm going to go help my dad uh, finish the motor. You can see here, the last time it was ran, whenever that was, this filter just pulled in a bunch of rust and sediment and other junk. So that's going to go away and we're going to throw in a Wix 33003. We'll pop that in line. I'm also going to put the right size hose clamps in instead of these 74 foot upper radiator hose ones. And Bentley just finished mounting the fuel line or tying that up. So we're going to slice this line off here, mount that to the pump, and hope that the mechanical fuel pump is working, which I'd, we would hope it would be. And then we'll prime this thing, dump some down the app, and with any luck, it's going to make some noise out of the pipe bladers. So here's the fuel line that's going back to that little jumper tank. This is the one that's going up to the fuel mechanism. This is a returnless style fuel pump. This is the factory line that had the factory clamp on it still. Surprised I didn't swap that when I swapped the engine, but anyway, fuel is plumbed in, so now we can go up top and prime that carb. So this is a uh, nitro fuel. It's actually the Bentley's RC cars, but same principle. It's high octane fuel with basically two cycle oil in it which is going to help lube up the rings and the valve train and everything like that you, you want to try to avoid washing down your rings if you have a chance of an engine not starting by just dumping raw fuel or the worst thing you can do is brake clean or carb clean and fog this thing down if it doesn't run you can literally weld the rings to the cylinder walls <laughs> so we're filling up the bowl here there we go a little down the app. I guess there's nothing left to do but bring the thunder. Twist on it. See what happens. Give it a pump yeah, give her a pump. Okay, crank it. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Definitely got a piston down. It's acting like it doesn't have sparkles. Bat cables hooked to the distributor. Try it again. I don't think we got spark. It's not even trying. Also, the fuel pump's not pumping, oddly enough. Let me get the sparkle tester. Okay, Bentley's gonna crank this and we're gonna be watching this light. It should flash if we've got the spark. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. So we've got spark, but it's not wanting to fire at all. I'm pretty sure it's not flooded. Hmm, that's not good. That says timing usually. I don't know, should we try a little bit more first? Running this pump off of Milwaukee. Trying to get fuel up here. Ah, oh, there we go. What's oh, it? It's air locked. Oh, she's filling. There we go. Okay, go. I 
I can hear it hitting backwards through the carburetor. That usually means the timing chain has jumped or something significantly is wrong with valve train. Yeah. Is there any way to like change the timing? Well, there's a lot of ways to change the timing, yeah. Can't you like twist that thing? You sure can. Yeah, you can advance or retard the timing by turning that. But if it's firing through the carburetor, that means that the piston is not in correct relation with the valves, usually. So the motor's not good? Well, that's what the guy said. The motor is not good. <laughs> Here we are. Hmm. Okay, crank it again. <coughs> crank it again. Kind of. Timing's way off. Ouch! Hood hinge! I'm learning that. Okay, go ahead. Try again. Make sure this. Why is it doing that? I don't. I think it's just stuck. It is. It's stuck. Like it's stuck. I don't know if the bottom blades are. Yeah, see the four bar. There we go. No, they're still stuck. Four barrels are stuck. You got a light? I mean, what is this flashing for? Okay, try it again. Something is definitely wrong. It's blowing back through the carb. Go again. Okay. Man, we had a fire for a second there. Yep. Try it again. Try it again. Boy, oh boy. Hmm. Well, the reality of this is, just based on experience and what I'm hearing and feeling, is compression coming through the carburetor on one of the strokes, and you can hear that dead miss. So, bent or drop valve, bent push rod, wiped cam lobe, or jump timing chain. <laughs> so the likelihood of this running, extremely minimal. If it does run, it's going to run very poor. However, we did successfully unlock the engine. That's a win. I just want to hear it run for a few seconds, and I'll be happy. We got options for engines if we want to go that far. So we're going to put a timing light on it right now, make sure the initial timing's dialed in so we can cross timing off the list. Then all we have to modulate is the fuel, see if we can get this thing fired up and breathe in some fresh air. Uh, also, now that I think about it, 
if it is like a bent valve or something, remember that piston was really beat up and weird? Yeah. Do you think that could be one of the problems? Very likely, yeah. we got to remember, the guy sold this cheap enough that he was just completely done with the thing. He was basically like, get it out of here. So he might have done some troubleshooting and determined it's not even worth his time. So, like he said, the motor's bad. <laughs> well, let's still try to fire it up. Another thing I just thought of, obviously someone engine swapped this. Timing could be 180 degrees out. Hard to say. All right, go ahead and crank it. Okay. This timing light is just junk. Well, she's hurting, ain't she, bud? Yeah. We uh, got the battery on boil. That's my mistake. Every good project starts with the battery on boil. I think what we're going to do is verify TDC. Make sure that it's not 180 degrees off. And then if that's not the case, it is definitely, definitely hurt. But we've had it galloping a few times. Mm -hmm. One time it ran for, I think, two seconds. But that was about... That was about it, and it didn't sound good. So let's go TDC, get back to basics, see what that looks like. Going to kind of talk through some of this. A lot of you have seen me do this 446,912 times, but some of you might, you know, maybe not. I'm not sure, but let's go through it. So TDC, top dead center. We want that number one cylinder up at the top. I just took the sparkulator out. I also gandered on that because we just wanted to see if we were feeding her too much fuel, which we're not. I stuck my finger in the hole. Bentley just bumps the key until I could feel the compression stroke coming around. Then I just lined up the timing mark on the balancer to the timing mark tab at zero. I pulled the cap off, made sure that the rotor was pointing at the number one cylinder. But keep in mind, that doesn't necessarily matter if the number one spark plug, say it was pointing backwards and the number one lightning hose was on the back of the distributor back there. As long as your rotor is firing to your number one cylinder, the relation doesn't really matter. The correct way, however, is the rotor pointing towards number one, which we have in this instance. Then, I went ahead and backed this to 12 degrees before top dead center, which is initial timing. There's a reason GM timing marks start at 12, go to 8, 6, 4, and 0. 12 is typically what they recommend on a small block. There's no reason to have anything past that. It's a waste of money. Roll that timing mark back to 12. Now all I need to do is line up the rotor tab precisely to the post on the cap, and boom, we're at 12 degrees before top dead center, or 12 degrees advance. I made a mark on the base of the distributor with a marker. Now I'm just going to pull that cap again, line them up precisely, give it a little bit more fuel, twist on it, see if it fires. Plan? Yep. Okay. Okay, buddy, you ready? Yep. You got to say it when you crank it over. Bring the thunder. Yep. Bring thunder. Oh, I think you are good luck. Should we try it again? Go ahead. Wow! Still something very wrong. Try it again. Try it again. Try it again. Let me turn the fuel pump on. It wants to run, but there's definitely something off with timing. Also, I don't need to go to the barber anymore. Got me a haircut. <laughs> Beard trimmed by fire. Okay. Okay. Man, it's so close. Again. 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 
Again. Crank on her again. Okay. Well, we've heard the engine bark off a few times here. It wants to run. It's trying to run. Well, we've heard it run a handful of times for short periods of time. But there is definitely something physically or mechanically wrong with this engine inside of it. So, is it worth tearing all the way down to the block to determine it? Probably not, but I'm gonna at least pull a valve cover and see if I could determine what's going on. I can hear it igniting and lighting fuel inside the intake, so like I said, it's very likely dropped or bent valve, push rod, cam, or maybe even the timing cover. So I'm gonna pull off some valve covers, see what we got going on. All right. Well, the gasket stayed on the head. Wow. See anything odd? Not really. This one's a tiny bit that way. I see some milkshake. That's water and oil. See how that's kind of chocolate milkish color? Yeah. yeah. Well, Bentley tore out the valve covers here and nothing out of the ordinary. What a guy would be looking for here is one of these rocker nuts to be tightened significantly more than another and you could tell by how many threads are sticking up here and nothing looks out of the ordinary some of you might have already caught what's all this yellow paint going on in here well i used a paint marker thing and i drew a line on all the push rods here both sides i'm going to have bentley crank this and what we're going to be looking for is making sure that these push rods are spinning yeah they spin this is a true story if you have a flat tappet cam, whether it's solid or hydraulic, the lifters spin in the bore to prevent excessive wear. And they do that with a little bit of slant on the cam lobe, so when it makes contact with that lifter, it forces it to spin. That transfers to the push rod, and therefore we should see these yellow marks just whirling away in there. If we don't see them whirling, three things. Worn cam lobe, bent push rod, or we got a bad lifter. And if you got a bad lifter, you typically also have in conjunction a bad cam lobe. So we're going to go ahead and have Bentley spin this over. And we'll start on this side and we'll just kind of watch and see what's going on. You ready? Twist on that key. Oh, I already see the issue, but for giggles, crank it one more time. Okay, stop. We've got a worn cam lobe here. Crank it again. This one is barely lifting. Watch this one where my finger's at. Okay. We've also got a absolutely destroyed cam lobe or lifter or push rod or combination of the both. Watch this back one back here and that's our pop through the valve train. Watch this back one all the way back here. Crank it again. That doesn't even budge. This cam, they must have put a camshaft in here or something. Well, maybe not. But this thing is trashed cam is gone yep that's interesting huh. well that certainly explains a lot that's one of the worst condition cams i've seen in many years there's multiple cams wiped in that thing there's nothing we can do at this point other than potentially do a cam and lifter swap but Keep in mind all of that metal that was sheared and worn away at this point has gone through the oiling system. It's gonna be in the bearings, the mains and the rods. Plus, remember that damage we saw on number two piston? This engine is hammered. There's really no point. It's gonna need a whole rebuild is what I'm saying. 
But we're not done yet. We're gonna go ahead and put the valve covers back on, put the air cleaner back on this thing. We're gonna go out to Rusty Acres, get the hood, put the hood on this, button it up because this truck definitely is good enough to come back again. Well, I don't know, you guys let me know what you think. We have a 400 over there that I did a quick dingle ball rehone on. Maybe we do a cheap rebuild on this 350 or find something else. You guys let me know. But I think this truck is solid enough to make a builder out of the thing. Have a nice little hot rod. I know Bentley has sure fallen in love with it. He's mentioned about 314 times. Let's just drop that other engine in quick tonight. <laughs> Wish we had time, but again, he's leaving with the wife on a family vacation. I'm going the other direction for another revival. So we just don't have time right now, but we want to definitely keep this thing out of the weather for any additional harm that might happen to it. All right, you getting those covers back on? Okay, sorry, bud, we got close. We heard it run for a little bit, which is amazing. Technically, we did get it running. Technically, we did get it running, that is right. Glass, a quarter full. And what happens when you put ice in it? It's all the way full. <laughs> yeah. Bentley's got this all buttoned up. Whoops. This spins around over here, but that's okay. It'll keep it out of the wheeler. Do you want to throw a sparkulator and diamond reel? Sure. The old golf cart's got a bum plug. You put that in. I'm going to try to hotwire that window. I got this power window to work. But that one, I think the switch is bad. I'm going to try to hotwire it. Get this thing sealed up. Diamond reel, she was pretty fouled up. This thing, I don't know how many miles... We put on this old Yamaha G1, but it is incredible. I've hauled engines in here and car parts and fertilizer and hay and the whole family and fence posts and lawnmowers and weed whackers and you name it. Got her? Oh, I think you might have to take the... Yeah, there you go. Boy, it needs a belt. Ooh. We'll pretend we didn't see that. Oh yeah. Well, here's where the truck sat for years. And the hood is over here. So we'll throw, oh, too bad, it's, it's pretty rotted. But it'll be enough to cover the engine. We're gonna throw this up on diamond reel and get it back to the shop. Had to bring in Brad, the big guns. Help me put the hood on here. And then Bentley's gonna tighten. Okay, if you give me a bolt, buddy. Yeah. Um, lift your side up in the bottom, like 12 feet. 12 feet up. Okay, come around front, it'll be easier for you. You know what to say about teamwork. It's more expensive labor. Let her rip. Oh, that feels good. Okay, we got one more. Oh, that's in the back. Push up on the hood. See if you can get that one. Uh-oh. This old guy is going to need a hood. It's so rotted all the way through its, you know, latch mechanism and main support. And someone already kinked it a couple times, unfortunately. So we're not going to push it, but at least it's covering the engine compartment at this point. Oh, all bent up. Yep, got to get that window up. Load a couple parts in the back of it. I got my node in the windshield, wiped cam and bad piston, and uh, 
sadly this is going to go out to the field soon. Let's get a chunk of wire. Well, I got the button tore apart. Figured out the outside is the uh, passenger side and the inside is the driver's side. And brown is down, blue is up. Brown down towards the dirt, blue up towards the sky. This side, I thought maybe it was a ground. This motor is just dead. It's doing nothing. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to bag up this window again, but that's just the way she goes. Now that we cleaned it up, or I should say Bentley cleaned it up, all nice, we might as well keep it that way. Back out to Rusty Acres, this truck goes. Let us know what you wanna do with this thing. I think, personally, it's definitely worth engine swapping it, but you guys let me know and what kind of engine. Not quite sure, what do you want? Supercharged one. I figured he was going to say that. Hey, you can't win them all, and this is one of those cases. The cam is just absolutely destroyed. Nothing we could do. However, we did get it unstuck. We got the engine rotating again, and we did hear it fire several times. So in my book, that's still a victory. We've got a nice platform to work from in the future. Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate it very much. Just a reminder, you are absolutely running out of time to get entered for your chance to win that Mountain Dew car. You've got to go to vicegripgarage.com. Every $5 you spend gets you one entry for a chance to win that Mountain Dew car, plus $5,000. Good luck. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Okay, we need the John Deere strap. Oh, grab some tape. We got to tape up that window, too.